Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books. Today we are talking about the Miles Franklin Literary Award, uh, which is um, a big prize here in Australia. Uh, the long list has just been announced and so I'm going to talk you through the books on the long list and tell you about uh, my reading plans. Now, there have been 10 books long listed um, for this prize, which is unusual because normally there's 12, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, odd, but that's okay. That's less books to read. That's fine. Um, and of the 10 books, I have now read three of them, having finished one of them last night. And I'll I'll tell you about that in a minute. So I'm going to show you the three books that, first of all, that I have already read, and then we will go through the rest of them in alphabetical order. Um, so in no particular order. Well, it is a particular order, but not in order of preference or anything like that. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the three that I have already read. Um, thankfully, this year there was quite a bit of uh, crossover between the long list of the Miles Franklin Award and the long list of the Stella Prize. So two of the books that I've already read um, are from, were on, on the Stella, uh, shortlist actually, and then there's another book that I'll mention as we go along um, that I haven't yet read that is also on the Stella long list. Um, so that was exciting. And then there was another book that I have already read um, this year that uh, was not on the Stella shortlist or long list, but uh, I have already read it. So let's start with Hospital by Sanya Rushdie. Um, this is a book that was originally written in Bengali and is translated by Arunava Sinha. Uh, this book was shortlisted for the Stella Prize and is now on the long list of the Miles Franklin Literary Award. Um, so this is an interesting book because uh, I Re I read it sort of as autofiction, so very strongly based on what happened to the author. The character is called the same name as the author and so on. So it begins with uh, Sanya, uh, who is experiencing some um, symptoms that are concerning her family. Um, they're concerned about her, and the reason is that she has been um, she has had psychotic episodes in the past and they're concerned that she's about to um, have another one. Um, and so that eventuates and she ends up going to, a, you know, a few through a few hoops, but eventually ends up in hospital um, where she is sectioned and uh, she is, uh, then we sort of uh, go through what it's like being in that, environment, um, especially when you are experiencing a psychotic episode. Um, I won't give you my review of the book. Uh, I will link it up in the cards and down in the um, description below. But uh, I did enjoy this book. Um, it is very uh, interesting in the way that it kind of talks about psychosis in a very, like, coherent and logical way. Um, and as somebody who has not experienced psychosis, this was a really interesting insight into what that's like. Um, so yeah, I really um, would recommend this book. It's the way that it's written, you sort of, it starts off quite like the things that happen, you're never quite a hundred percent sure that they are really happening or not, or if this is part of the psychosis. Um, and as the book goes on and she starts to get better, things start to be a little clearer. So yeah, it was a very interesting book and I would recommend. It's also very short, um, so it was a quick read. Uh, let me see, 123 pages. So nice and easy to uh, tick this one off the list. The next one is um, the book that I mentioned before that I was not on the Stella long list, but I had already read, and that is Stoneyard Devotional by Charlotte Wood. Um, I read this one back in January, I think. And this one is about a woman who um, lives in the city, but she goes back to a small town um, where she grew up and she 
uh, goes to this, um, it's sort of like a convent essentially, um, uh, but it's in a, like a really rural kind of area of, um, you know, country Australia. Um, and so then she, she is married, she's got kids and she goes into this monastery first as a visitor and then she comes to stay there for a longer term, um, kind of situation, although she's not technically a nun or anything like that. She just stays there. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. She's also not, um, she doesn't believe in God either. Uh, and she sort of, it's sort of like she falls into this, but it also is kind of, um, very, uh, deliberate as well in some ways. <laughs> um, but while she's there, um, she is reflecting on a lot of things. It's a really reflective novel. And also she is, um, she has these sort of a few, a few events that happen because this is not a very plot heavy book. Um, this is definitely more of a like interior type of book, you know, a book what that's talking about, um, how, you know, her thought process and how she's feeling about things. Um, but there are a couple of events that happen and sort of this long running thread is, um, a, a nun who was at this convent convent and who went overseas to do some, um, sort of like charity type of work, uh, died overseas and they're trying to get her body back to the convent to be buried there. So that's sort of like this big the the kind of the event that's sort of building and then you know sort of uh eventuates towards the end of the book and then uh another event that happens is that they have a mouse plague which uh if you have been in australia in the last couple of years you'll know that we had a massive mouse plague um a few years ago and I'm sure that if you were living through that in sort of, especially in country New South Wales, where it was like or country Australia, where it was very, uh, very bad, especially for people in farming situations, because the mice were just getting into everything. Um, and it was relentless, absolutely relentless. So that happens in here. So if, if that, if that is your experience, this might be a little confronting. <laughs> uh, if you're not ready to read about it, maybe give this one a miss. Um, and then also there's a, a nun who uh, ends up, is like visiting, um, but she has a connection with our main character um, and that is sort of like explored and there's sort of an, an incident that happened when they were younger um, that is kind of haunting the main character about this. And so she's a bit, uh, she has a like trepidation about interacting with this woman again. So lots of interesting sort of like very interior type of things. I really enjoyed this, but that is really the kind of thing that I enjoy. So it, it's not unexpected <laughs> that I, wait, is that right? Not unexpected. Yeah, not unexpected for me to enjoy this book. But if that's not your thing, then maybe this will be a bit too like reflective. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love a reflective novel. So anyway, that one, um, I'm excited to see in the long list because number one, I've already read it. And number two, I quite enjoyed it. The third one that I have read, and I only just finished this one last night was Praiseworthy by Alexis Wright. It's, um, a beast of a book. It is 723 pages long. Um, I have some thoughts about this. I will explore these thoughts a little more in depth when I do my, um, wrap up of the month of May, um, which will be probably the next video after this one. Um, but <laughs> I didn't enjoy, I did not enjoy this book. I endured this book. I'm proud of myself for pushing through and getting to the end of it. Cause I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I wasn't going to um, DNF it. When it was long listed for this prize, I was like, ah, <sighs> okay, I guess I have to read it now. Um, because I do want to read the Miles Franklin long list this year. That is something that I would like to do. Um, it won the Stella prize. Um, I feel like I've read some really positive reviews of this. Like lots of people are really getting into this. A lot of people are saying it's like, it's kind it's difficult, but it's like worth it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's worth it. Um, yeah, 
I listened to the audiobook in the end because I just could not with my eyeballs. And so yesterday, because I was homesick, I'm homesick again today. That's why I'm filming on a, a, a weird day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I sat down and I did a thousand piece puzzle. I did almost the entire puzzle yesterday listening to, because I'd gotten to about the halfway point already by the time we got to yesterday. And then I just like, the, the audiobook is 36 hours long. Like it's ridiculous. It's so long. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to stop harping on about this. You will hear me talk about this book one more time <laughs> in my wrap up. And then probably when I wrap up my reading of the Miles Franklin, then I'm never going to talk about this book again because I've clearly been ranting about it in multiple videos. So apologies for those people who are sick of hearing me talking about how much I am not enjoying Praiseworthy. I have now finished it. So there will be no more <laughs> after I've wrapped up the month. So uh, this was not my favourite, um, but I know a lot of people are really enjoying it and giving it five stars and saying it is the great Australian novel. Um, so anyway, that one is on the long list as well. Uh, I will leave it to you to, <laughs> to decide if it's going to be for you or not. Okay, let's get on to the ones I have not yet read. Um, and as I said, I'm going to go through these in alphabetical order. And obviously I don't have as much to say about them because I have not yet read them. The first one is this one, Only Sound Remains by Hossein Asghari. Uh, this is a very short book. Um, it's very little. Let me see how many pages for you. 175. We love a short a short book on a on a prize long list because it may means a lot less like intensive reading. So yeah, I guess it helps to balance out the fact that they have a book that is over 700 pages on a long list as well. Um, so this one's called Only Sound Remains and it says, Saeed has not returned to Iran after publishing his novel The Imagined imaginary narrative of a real murder for fear of political persecution. He is surprised when Ishmael, his father, who has never left Iran, announces that he is travelling to Adelaide to visit him. During his, his short stay, Ishmael tells Saeed the story of his unrequited love for Faru Farouk Zad. I apologise, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong the most controversial poet of modern Iran. The story makes Saeed see his father in a new light and leaves him with the haunting question, had his father unwittingly played a role in Foro's, Foro's death? So, sounds very interesting. I'm keen to read it. Um, and yeah, glad to have this one in my collection. Um, the next one is Wall by Jen Craig. Um, I have to say, because I ordered this book, and I think it was, it, it doesn't feel, as with this one actually, I don't like the feel of the cover of this one. It's kind of got a like slightly matte texture to it, and it's it doesn't feel great. This one is very shiny, but it, it just feels, the cover feels a bit cheap. I'm not going to lie. Um, anyway, that's just a weird... A physical, a physical complaint about the book feels a bit cheap. <laughs> anyway, this one is 181 pages. Um, I've never read anything by Jen Craig before. Um, but yeah, let me tell you about this one. It says, a woman returns to Australia to clear out her father's house with an eye to transforming the contents into an art installation in the tradition of the revered Chinese artist Song Dong. What she hasn't reckoned with is the tangle of jealousies, resentments and familial complications that she had thought in leaving the country she had put behind her, a tangle that ensnares her before she arrives. Um, so... Sounds interesting. I do like a book that is about art. Um, so, yeah, interested to read this one as well. Again, we love that it's short. Makes it easy to kind of zip through. Okay, the next one is called Strangers at the Port by Lauren Amy Curtis. Um, now, this one is interesting because when I was looking up this book, because I'd not heard of it before, um, it says... Granta, Best of Young British Novelist 2023 on the front. So it's interesting that, and I had to like confirm, she is definitely Australian. So it's interesting that she's been categorized as a British novelist. Um, but anyway, uh, I had not heard of this one before. It is 
215 pages, so again, not too long. Um, and it says, Julia is 10. She lives on the greenest island in a volcanic archipelago. Her best friend, apart from her older sister Giovanna, is a donkey. Julia and Giovanna's days are on days on the island are shaped by community superstition and isolation until the men arrive and a foreign yacht on onkus <laughs> anchors <laughs> the a foreign yacht anchors at the port and the vines begin to fail and everything changes so that sounds really interesting as well okay next one this one's a tiny bit longer uh let me see what have we got? 340 pages, 41 pages. Um, and this one is Anam by Andre Dell. Um, this one I had heard of uh, before it was long listed and I had put it on my wish list. So I don't know who I'd heard talking about this one, but obviously I'd heard someone talking about it and it sounded interesting to me. So I'd put it on my wish list. Um, but let me tell you about it. A grandson tries to learn the family story, but what kind of story is it? Is it a prison memoir about the grandfather held without charge or trial by a revolutionary government? Is it an oral history of the grandmother left behind to look after the children? A love story or a ghost story? A mystery to be solved. Moving from 1930s Hanoi through a series of never-ending wars and displacements to Saigon, Paris, Melbourne and Cambridge, Anam is a novel about memory and inheritance, colonialism and belonging home and exile. Anam blends fiction and essay, theory and everyday life to imagine that that which has been repressed, left out and forgotten. The grandson minds his family and personal stories to turn over ideas that resonate with us, with all of us around place and home, legacy and expectation, ambition and sacrifice. As he sifts through letters, photographs, government documents and memories, he has his own family to think about, a partner and an infant daughter daughter is there a way to remember the past that creates a future for them or does coming home always involve a certain amount of forgetting so this one sounds really interesting i think to the probably the thing that like struck a chord with me is the colonialism aspect of things because I, that is something that i have found myself really drawn to reading about um sort of the impacts of colonialism um on people from various colonized countries um of course, I live in Australia, which is a colonised country. I'm part of that legacy because I'm a white person in Australia. Um, and I'm sort of on this, like, decolonial, decolonization journey. Um, and so anytime I sort of hear about this, and I tend to really get into reading about, um, even in fictional settings, about the impacts of colonialism. Definitely a massive theme of my reading. So excited to read this one. This sounds really, really good. Okay, the next one is another one I had not heard of, and that is The Bell of the World by Gregory Day. This is the only one that's um, a hardback of all of the books, um, which is, in Australia, we don't do hardbacks that much. Like, our, this is this is sort of like the really typical format. It's that large format paperback is our, probably, when a book is first released, it's often in that in that kind of um, edition. So when this arrived and it was a hardback, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so we don't, we don't do, we don't do hardbacks that often. Most of the books in my collection are paperbacks. Anyway, The Bell of the World by Gregory Day. Um, so this one is a bit chunky. Uh, it is 405 pages long. Um, interesting cover. Let's see what it looks like underneath actually. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. It's blue, which is unexpected based on the the colour of the cover and the end papers. Interesting choice, but all right. Um, the cover is very interesting. It's got interesting art on it. Uh, it says, actually, let me have a look. When a troubled Sarah Hutchinson returns to Australia from boarding school in England and time spent in Europe, she is sent to live with her eccentric uncle Fernie on the family property. Now, I don't know how I'm going to say this correctly, but it's Mm, Nangahook, Nangahook, maybe. With the sound of the ocean surrounding everything they do on the farm, Sarah and her uncle form an inspired bond of host bond, hosting visiting field naturalists and holding soirees in which Sarah performs on a piano whose sound she has altered with items and objects from the bush and shore. Already that sounds really interesting. As Sarah's world is nourished by music and poetry, Fernie's life is marked by Such is Life, a book he has read 
and reread so much so that the volume is falling apart. Its saviour is Jones the bookbinder of Moolap, who performs a miraculous act to shock and surprise. Jones interleaves Fernie's volume with a book he bought from an American sailor, a once obscure tale of whales and the sea. In art as in life, nature seems supreme. Nangahook and its environs are threatened, however, when members of the community ask the Hutchinsons to help make a savage landscape sacred by financing the installation of a town bell. The fearless musician and her idealistic uncle refuse to buckle to local pressures, mounting their own defence of the bell of the world. So that does sound very literary. I don't think that would be up everybody's street, but um, it's, I'm interested to get into this one and see what it's all about. Okay, two more to go. Um, so, so far, <laughs> other than Anam, um, I had not heard of any of those. Uh, and now we get into the ones that I had heard of and were on my TBR um, and excited, excited to read. Um, the first one is Eden Glassy by Melissa, Melissa Lukashenko. This is the one I was alluding to before when I said there was another book from the Stella long list. So this was on the Stella long list, didn't make the short list. But it has been on my TBR since I heard about being announced it was uh, when it came out and I have read two other books by Melissa Lukashenko that I really enjoyed I've read Mullumbimby and Too Much Lip by her and they're both great so I have high hopes for this one um so this one says uh two extraordinary indigenous stories set five generations apart when Mulanyan meets the beautiful Nita in Eden Glassy their saltwater people still outnumber the British as colonial unrest peaks, Mulanyan dreams of taking his bride home to Ugambe country, but his plans for independence collide with white justice. Two centuries later, fiery activist Winona meets Dr. Johnny. Together they care for obstinate centena centenarian Granny Eddie, Eddie and sparks fly, but not always in the right direction. What nobody knows is how far the, the legacies of the past will reach into the mo their modern lives. In this brilliant epic no novel, Mil Melissa Lukashenko tortures Queensland's colonial myths while reimagining an Australian future. I can't wait. I'm so excited to read this. It, the only reason I hadn't before was because I didn't have a copy. <laughs> so now I do. Um, so very excited. And the other one I'm also excited about, and I already did own a copy of it. So it was very excited to see that it made the list. And that is The Sitter by Angela O'Keefe. Again, we've got an art theme for this one. Uh, it says Paris 2020. A writer is confined to her hotel room during the early days of the pandemic, struggling to finish a novel about Hortense Cezanne, wife and sometimes sometime muse of the famous painter. Dead for more than a century, Hortense has been reawakened by this creative endeavour and now shadows the writer through the lockdown city. But Hortense, always subject to the gaze of others, is increasingly intrigued by the woman before her. Who is she and what event hides in her past? Heartbreaking and perfectly formed, the sitter explores the tension between artist and subject and between the stories told about us and the stories we choose to tell. So this I already owned. It's already on my TBR. I am so glad to have an excuse to read it, to prioritize it um, because I've been, it's been sitting there taunting me. Um, so this is definitely going on to my sirens reading challenge. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, very, very excited to now be able to read the sitter. So that is the long list. Let me whoop, grab those for you. Um, exciting. I love that I've read three of them already, especially now that I've tackled the long one, um, the one that I was not looking forward to, and I've now done it. So I'm excited to read the rest of this long list and I will keep you updated. Uh, so subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you want to hear more about uh, the Miles Franklin long list reading expedition I'm about to go on. Um, and yeah, I'll check back in once I've read all of the books and, um, hopefully that will be before the winner is announced, um, because that would be good <laughs> if I can get there. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, let's, let's speculate. I love, I love prize reading. I'm so excited about this and, um, yeah, follow along if you'd like to. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.
is what we do. We fuss, we fuss, we fuss. Oh. I think maybe you can just stay behind. That's not gonna work. On my hair. Did you know you're on my hair? Ow, 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 ow. Close, 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 close. Okay, maybe we get off, hey? 